And Uber Khan's one of those fights that's pretty much over before it really gets a chance to get started. I mean, you can see here, looking at the top logs in the entire world, the quickest kill done in 34 seconds. So very uh, hard to squeeze in that second pot during the fight. So with a pre-pot, usually these quick fights would favor using a potion of speed. Let's have a quick look then to see really what the top logs are for Shadow Priest. And the number one kill is actually from a player down under on the same server I'm playing on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they're using the Dying Curse Trinket as well as illustrations. So just a lot of upfront raw stats as well as receiving a power infusion during the fight. Now, in terms of what they do differently, maybe to yourself and why they are ranked so highly, we can actually have a look by going into the log analyzer. So their opening spell is a Shadow Fiend. They're going to use a potion of wild magic, berserking and hyperspeed accelerators. Every bit of haste and raw damage is there from the very get-go and bloodlust is activated. So first of all, they've empowered that Shadow Fiend to do massive damage and Shadow Fiend will pack a bit of a punch. Um, so don't, uh, don't discount that one. That's why you always want to make sure it's cast beforehand. They start by using Vampiric Touch, Devouring Plague on Anubrakan, Vampiric Touch on both guards. And only then, at four Shadow Weaving stacks, would they now start to apply the Shadow Web Pains across all three. Uh, that way, we've empowered them with the plus 10%. We've now got the Wild Magic Pot snapshot in them as well. And at this point, really, it is just a case of juggling all dots on all three targets. Now, perfect world scenario, the rest of your raid team would focus single target on an Uber Khan. Easier said than done, though, right? There's a lot of passive cleave. There's a lot of people that just want to zug zug down, and fair enough, they want to try and get good logs as well. Um, but this is going to be the best way to try and get that 99 log that you're craving. You want to make sure that your dots are constantly active on all three targets. Um, you know, you're weaving in mind flays to make sure those Shadow Web Pains never fall off. You're constantly keeping tabs as to where those Vampiric Touches are. Uh, and that's why using a good, um, you know, nameplate or a good Wii core to constantly keep tabs as to where these are at is going to be imperative. I mean, you look at the very top here, uh, average dot down time is only about a second, right? GCD usage incredibly high, so constantly going, okay, what can I do next? What can I do next? Uh, but this is going to be the best way to do the most damage, right? You can see here that as Bloodlust falls off, uh, that's when they use Power Infusion. Those two together do not stack. You'll only receive the mana reduction portion if you do combine them together. Um, you want to make sure that these are two separate cooldowns for the most damage possible. But that's it. Straightforward, short and sharp, right? Do a slightly different opener. Uh, make sure you coordinate with your raid team when that bloodlust is going to go out. It might look a little bit different to you, so you might want to use your Shadow Fiend in a slightly different position. Um, but the, the key takeaway here is that Potion of Wild Magic with three targets constantly dotted up is going to be the way to get a better pass when you try it next time.